Well, something that you just mentioned, um, and I kind of always been curious about, you know, people when you are on the road and you're away from home for so long, is there coping mechanisms? Is there something that you guys can do to make being away from home a little easier? Uh, There's something I do actually. This is this is kind of silly. Thanks. Here we go. <laughs> We've finally been practicing this yeah. all night. Anyway, Danica. <laughs> all right. Well, first of all, we are very very excited to welcome to the stream for the very first time the wonderful and super super talented Mr. Lonnie Eagleton. Welcome, sir. Woo! How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Really excited Yay. to uh, be a part of the show today. Thank you so much for joining Yay. us. Yay! Well, sure. uh, to round out the stream, he's actually making his fourth appearance and I believe debuting his purple hair. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the fantabulous Maddie Riley. Ah. What's up? It is. It's purple. It I is. To, you know, <laughs> I wanted to update your coffee cups a little bit that you're drinking from. So God. Yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna need the new coffee cups, please. Yeah. Hurry up. Yeah, there that's that's how I keep the merch going. You know, <laughs> you like the purple hair by the new cup, you know. It makes sense. Well, <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh we have to start out with um a very important question for Lonnie. Uh we wanted to know, have you tried the Maddie 2.0 coffee drink? <sighs> <laughs> no, I haven't, but I've heard good things. <laughs> you, you haven't had a heart attack in the glass yet? <laughs> no, I mean, Matt's been trying to get me to try it for probably the better part of a year now. And uh, yeah, do it. I just haven't done it yet. So, it so Matt and I had a chat like a few months ago, right? And we, he was like, man, you got to try Matt at 2.0. And I feel like I crushed his soul because I was like, you know what? I don't even drink coffee. And it was one of those like Shh, moments. Yeah. And uh so I'm not even a coffee drinker. You see me drinking out of these M&M &M mugs a fair bit, and they're just water. So I'm a big fraud, but I drink water <laughs> and no coffee. But maybe one of these days I'll try the Maddie 2.0. So okay. that's a long answer for the question. That's the way to do it, too. If if you've never had coffee before and you're not a coffee drinker, just go right into the Maddie 2.0, which has, like, tons of espresso and caffeine, like, galore yeah it's, it's so that's safe intense. i end up in the hospital drinker <laughs> and i've tried it and first of all i will say it is delicious because it it straight up tastes like a blueberry muffin it's amazing yeah. um but it will give you a heart attack instantly <laughs> so you got to be prepared yeah it's kind and of, then you'll uh... basically be screaming all day long <laughs> <laughs> wait that's Maddie, right here yeah <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, we, we want to see what you're actually consuming now because this is like oh it is a Maddie 2.0 uh, it's like a ridiculous mason jar <laughs> filled with is. like iced coffee and a double shot of espresso blueberry coffee and uh, some nice. milk in there to give it like that golden brown color and uh, this is the Maddie 2.0 yeah that's I'm sorry that is like a comically large drink <laughs> like, of course it is the Maddie 2.0 everything about it is very comically large it's great yeah you're just going to be talking <laughs> super fast by the end of this I, uh, yeah it's going to be crazy so yeah I, that is I the feel Maddie like I feel like we should explain what it is in case anybody doesn't know. It is a uh, contraption that Maddie uh, yeah. made, I guess. You invented it, right? And this is like your yeah. drink. So what, you go, what you go for. There's a coffee shop in Burbank called Ugly Mug uh, Coffee House, Coffee Shop. And uh, over time, we just started like, oh, yeah, let me try this flavor. Let me try that. Add some espresso. Oh, let's do a double shot of espresso. Let's do oat milk. And eventually, it just kind of turned into the Maddie 2.0. It's... Uh, if you have any doubts of what it is, I do have Maddie 2.0 mugs available. Oh yeah, I gotta get one of those. With the uh, they're available. To put your water in it. Yeah. And yeah, you'll <laughs> never forget the the ingredients. So it's a large cold brew iced coffee, uh, double shot of espresso, blueberry flavor, and oat milk, which wow. is exactly what's in this. Again, giant mason delicious, jar. but be careful. Well, awesome. delicious, but it will kill you. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> cheers, cheers. All right. Cheers. I gotta get one of those Maddie mugs, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Left I, out right. here. All the cool kids. I know. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I was very I'm offended so that you weren't a coffee drinker. I'm like, you're not getting one of these, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will Just say, kidding. I'm currently using mine for beer, so it also works well for cold liquids. Yeah, it works. It works great for everything. And mine is for aesthetic. And, there's... Yeah, you can you can have oh. you, can eat, you know you don't it's even have to drink cute. anything out of it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. All right, so Sweet. let's uh, let's move on a little bit. Um, we are curious. Uh, how did the two of y'all meet? Uh, yeah. So you want to take it, Matt? No, you can take it. I, I don't know which way to point though. I'm like, you can take it's it. It's backwards. I mean, it is backwards. You're on my left. Oh, but 
wait, you're there. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, anyways. Johnny, how do we um, meet? I'll let you take it. To answer the question, <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a weekly jam session at the Viper Room in West Hollywood, uh, which hasn't been happening lately due to the COVID pandemic, but it was uh, every Monday nights, I believe, at the Viper Room. And, you know, I used to go there pretty frequently. Matt used to go there too. And basically you just get up and jam some tunes, right? And I guess that's how we met. You know, we were paired up to play the same song one night. I forget what song it was. And we just kind of hit it off there and kept in touch after that. We'd say hi to each other. And uh, that was about it, you know? And the and rest is history. Yeah, right. Because uh, it's really cool. A lot of the people that are in this circle too are, you know, they're touring musicians, they're session people. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, it's a great place to network. So shortly after that, I know you were on tour with uh, Andy Black. Well, before Black Bell Brides, right? You were. Yeah. You were so, yeah, because I was going there and I was just trying to network in LA and stuff like that. And then uh, shortly after that, I got hired by Andy Black, who is the singer of Black Bell Brides. He's got a solo project called Andy Black. And he hired me to go on tour with him for his album, Ghosts of Ohio. So I did, uh, what was it, about like like five months of touring or something with him. And it was right around that time that you got hired by Avril Lavigne, Matt, That's to right. uh, play bass uh, with her. I and her think. music director came out to the event. You know, he had got some referrals of, you know, bass players around town and my name mm -hmm. was in the circle. So he actually came to the jam that you and I met at, you know, months prior. But he came to that same jam night and saw me and was like, oh, yeah, he seems like a good fit. Um, and then lo and behold, a few weeks after that, I'm texting you being like, hey, now I'm going on tour with Avril. <laughs> you know, so it's crazy how it works in, in Hollywood. It, yeah, yeah it's like, funny how it just kind of escalates like that, because when we first met, you know, we were just both in the in the scene you know trying to land yeah. a tour for that year or for whatever it is and then yeah I'm, I'm on tour with andy black which eventually led to uh blackfield brides uh you know i got hired to play with blackfield brides after the andy black tour finished and that was right around the time you got hired to play with avril so we were both kind of just like oh sweet you know hard work right. pays off and it's nice to see when uh it's nice to see when you put out put in all the hard work and then eventually you're, you find yourself on a big tour and it's just like oh awesome <laughs> awesome. How how are things looking like out in in LA right now? Or like are things starting to open up or any like at the clubs opening? I'm, I mean, because in Miami, it's like we never shut down, you know, but I, yeah. I know California <laughs> really like, you know, yeah, they, they locked it up. You know, I think it's set for like June 15th where restrictions are going to lift and open up. But right now, yeah, the clubs are still kind of closed. A lot of the musicians are kind of all over the country because there's I know Vegas is doing some shows and Nashville is doing some shows. So it seems like a, a lot of, you know, people in the LA scene are still not really doing anything much in LA. Or yeah, it's, it's Hollywood still Hollywood pretty Hollywood. much, still pretty much pandemic mode, but there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, a lot of the vaccines are rolling up pretty quickly and you can kind of see stuff starting to be announced um, to, you know, to kind of plug myself here, just cause it's kind of <laughs> plays into the question. Um, my band Blackfoot Brides just announced a tour for the fall. So we're actually starting, uh, we're planning on going out September 17th, I think is the first show. Yep. Uh, oh, <laughs> there you go. You guys, you guys are all ready to go here. Yeah. We are. <laughs> There's me in the corner. But <laughs> I don't know yeah, where to point. That's yeah. me in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, there's the tour. Yeah, September 17th in uh, Lincoln, New England. Is that what it says? Lincoln. Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> Nebraska, okay. I'm Canadian, so I don't, I'm not too familiar with this. <laughs> I heard you say a boot. I definitely I heard a boot. boot. <laughs> I do not say a boot. You definitely do. Nobody don't. says a boot, okay? That's the biggest <laughs> misconception. No, nobody says that. Anyways, yeah, so we're doing September till uh, mid-November. So, yeah, I mean, it's looking like, uh, you know, the things are going to be rolling again as far as shows go come the fall time in the U.S., so that's pretty exciting. That, what do you guys, uh, well, I know, we don't have anything official for Avril yet, but hopefully 2022. But what are you guys most looking forward to about being back on the road? Uh, well, for me, uh, I feel so passionate. So I'm like, I'm going to jump in on this. Sorry, Lonnie. It's but for like, both of you. Yeah. yeah. It's like my whole, it, you too, right? That's like our identity and that's who we are. Like we're musicians, we perform. That's why we got into this in the first place. There's something that, you know, it's part of our, soul <laughs> you know really we're musicians and it um getting on the road and, and all that's gonna be great to hang with everyone but really it's just getting on stage and being able to perform that's what i'm most looking forward to and it's been you know in la and all of this stuff i, I mean i was doing 
prior to the tours and everything, I was still doing multiple shows a week, clubs and gigging and rehearsals. So to go a year and a half without a single show where I was doing many shows a week, like it's very strange. So I'm just looking forward to kind of getting my identity back and be like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm a musician. I'm a bass player. This is cool. You know, that's all I'm looking forward to. Yeah. yeah. I, I know what you mean, Matt. It, it really is, you know, part of our identity. It's like, if you go into the, the touring business, it's, it's really because you have to, you know, like it's a lot, a lot of people have a hard time being away from home for that long and stuff, but you know, like, as a musician, it's like you just crave that that rush you get from being on stage, and it, it's hard to be away from it. And you know, there are times where maybe you're out on a tour, but even then, and you're not doing big shows. But even then, you're still doing local shows around town, or you're going to jam nights like the Sunset Jam that Matt and I met at. So you know, you're always getting that that fix to some extent of just being on stage and performing. So to have none of that for a year and a half or however long it's been, it's crazy. So we're looking forward to getting back out there. Well, something that you just mentioned, um, and I kind of always been curious about, you know, people when you are on the road and you're away from home for so long, is there coping mechanisms? Is there something that you guys can do to make being away from home a little easier? Uh, There's something I do, actually. This is yeah. this is kind of silly, but I um, <laughs> before I leave on a tour, like I'll take pictures of my the, like my living room and my bedroom and stuff. And I'll just like look at them and it kind of reminds me of being there. I remember feeling like really homesick. But you know, usually the the rush of being on stage kind of makes up for any of that. And it's it's where we want to be. We love being on the bus. So yeah, there are times where it's tough, especially like you know being away from my wife is not fun. But you know, it's it's all part of it. It's it's, it's the life we choose, and we wouldn't have any other way. That's true. true. That's interesting. And the, the people on the road with us too is you know they're all doing the same thing. They're away from home, and we rehearse together. We play shows together. We're on the same tour buses. So it almost feels like a family when you're on the road. So you probably miss a lot about, you know, home when you're on the road, but it's almost like a secondary home and a secondary family. So you feel kind of right at, you know, right in place with everything. It's really cool. It's yeah, the, the, the road you know, family, they call it. Yeah. And then you get back home and you miss being on tour. So it's, it's <laughs> right. like, you're never happy. <laughs> <laughs> no. yep. Fair enough. Life of a musician. <laughs> <laughs> Never happy. Well, uh, one, of the things, uh, one of the things, Lonnie, that you mentioned at the beginning of the stream was that you had the opportunity to interview Maddie. And so uh, I want to know, is that something that, you know, that, that you enjoy to do as well as being a musician? Do you also like journalism and interviewing or how did that come about? Uh, yeah, no, that was that was a blast. Uh, the interview we did. So, yeah. So I have a YouTube channel that I do that I that I run uh, it's just you know I, I post about or make videos about music related stuff about my band um, just about uh, you know I do guitar lessons I review songs I do interviews uh, just all, all everything kind of in, in, that falls under the music umbrella and yeah I reached out to Matt and I was like hey you know maybe we could do an interview for my channel if you'd be interested I'd love to hear how you landed the gig with Avril Lavigne uh, you know what uh, what your process is about preparing for a major scale tour like that. Mm -hmm. I was performing on uh, Seth Meyers, you know, all this, the cool stuff that Matt had done in the, in the recent months leading up to that interview. And yeah, he was kind enough to get on a video chat with me and we, we put it up on my YouTube channel. Yeah, it's an awesome interview. Like we really, really enjoyed it. It was super cool. Oh, you checked it up? Uh-huh, yeah. sure nice. did. <laughs> Yay. My lighting was so bad. That was like the first <laughs> video I did in quarantine when uh, everyone was required to have oh, lights and studio setups, video setups, all this stuff. Do you remember that, Lonnie? And I, I'm like, hey, I bought this GoPro, it's sweet. Oh, it's gonna look so good. And then I, I remember like the next day you're like, um, you don't have any lights or anything? Like, <laughs> I, no, I, do remember that. I remember you were all self-conscious about it. And I was like, don't worry about it though. It's all about it's all about the answers. Right? And, and then what's That's funny true. is I, re I remember um, shortly after we did that interview, you were on this very show. I think. Yeah. And or you were like preparing for it and you you texted me a picture because you had just got some lights and you're like, I'm learning. <laughs> right. And then yeah, here yeah. you are all lit up today. And you look great. Look at this. This is great. Got a backdrop, got multiple lights, HD camera. I mean, this is so just lit. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that and was when, funny. And when touring starts, I won't need it ever again. This is great, you know. <laughs> just yeah. kidding it's, it's awesome you know? show? god come well, on uh, yeah you know i, I mean know, i'll be too this... busy i'm just out of town you know no i'm just kidding well i was gonna say you know <laughs> th this show has given us the opportunity you know to sit down and talk to people like the two of you that during normal times we wouldn't ever have these opportunities and so 
I hope you guys understand how grateful we are, you know, for these oh, moments. Man. And, you know, thank you guys. You know, this is like kind of the, the last, well, thank you. But I feel like this is the, the calm before the storm. Like things are starting to pick up again. Life is, is getting ready to resume and, yeah, you know, we're, yeah. It's happening. I think we don't feel that way. And thanks, thanks yeah. for having us on. And uh, not that the show's over. I feel like I'm <laughs> making it seem like it's over. But, but, but thanks for having us on. And then, thanks, yeah. thanks, Maddie, for reaching out. Yeah, and, uh, see you guys. It was great. But, yeah. but no, that is, I remember before the pandemic, all of my friends, like in LA and stuff, I'd see them once or twice a year because, right, they're on the road for six months at a time and no one's really in the same city at the same time. So it was weird without even thinking about it. Like, oh, yeah, the past year and a half, everyone was kind of in the same spot, available doing their thing i know we all want to get back on the road and do our thing but it's gonna be it's gonna be weird when it's like oh yeah i forgot this person's out of the country for six months at a time this person's here for four months and blah 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 so it's it is cool because out aside from the show i was also able to do a lot of other things that i wouldn't have done or had the time to do if we would have done like the europe and the asia tour where i was supposed to be gone for four months and i wouldn't have had these cool video stuff and learned how to do lighting so yeah it's cool mm -hmm. as much as we're like we got to get back out there it's been it's been interesting, you know, it's been a fun time. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate the silver lining of it all. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and speaking of the things that we've been doing during the quarantine and during these uh, interesting different times, um, <laughs> Maddie, we wanted to, of course, mention your newest single, Synonym for Isolation. And, cool. um, and for anybody who hasn't heard it, please do. Please do, because it's so fucking cool. Um, cool. And uh, we also wanted to know what can we expect next? Yay, there you go. You can download there it. There it is. Um, I love how you guys yeah. put this stuff up there. That's I know, this is awesome. Shout Super out to Jude, our, our producer. Yeah, Jude. Jude's Jude. the man. Jude's great. Hey, Jude. Um, <laughs> hey, Jude. Um, what's next? It's funny. What's What's been going on? And I can't believe it's already been this long, but it's been, what, six months since I was on the show last, you know? And yeah, February? last time I was on was with... Was Derek. It, it was Derek, and that was back in was that February? November. Was that November? No, no. Christmas. No. no, it was Christmas. I was drinking a Christmas cup. I was drinking a Christmas cup. That was a very long time. I know. It's <laughs> crazy. Okay. So at that time, I was saying, Dang. hey, I'm going to do some singles. I'm going to do some, you know, downtime. I'm going to record. So uh, this is the third song that I've done uh, in this time frame. And uh, really what's coming next, I don't know. In terms of my own singles, um, I like kind of just recording in my free time. Again, something I wouldn't have been able to do if I was touring. And I kind of just release them on, it's not even a set schedule. I kind of re record it, edit it, get the artwork, put it out there, you know? So I do have a few more set. I'll probably have maybe like eight or nine songs together on an album. Uh, maybe by fall, I'll have it out. But really, I don't have any time frame for, uh, you know, when it's coming out, individual singles. Uh, the hardest part for me, because a lot of it is instrumental. I think there's going to be vocals on a few. Um, but because it's all instrumental and it's, you know, there's no lyrics or words to it by the time it's ready to get released and get mixed and get mastered, all that stuff. The hardest part is not like the writing the song and recording it and editing it. It's like, oh yeah, I need a title now. So it's <laughs> it, it literally, it takes me like, I can write and record these songs like nothing. When it comes time to come up with a title, it takes me like four days of like, oh, this title's dumb. This is crazy. And I, then I get like the, yeah. the mixing engineers like, hey man, do you have your song ready? What's the title? And I'm, the guy, you know, people doing artwork and stuff. Hey, what's the name of the song? So I can start the, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. I wrote and recorded and did this whole thing and I can't come up with a, a name. So, you know, it's very like <laughs> soundscapey, I guess the record. It's very, you know, I don't know. It's very abstract sounding. Were there so, any um, um so, uh, titles that didn't make the cut? Any good ones? Yeah. And I, I they weren't even like official titles. They're oh. just like in my notes app on my phone. I'll just have like. 30 things oh this seems weird pretty cool like it's very like i'm a huge fan of like the mars volta and radiohead yeah it, for, that's like the vibe i'm going for so a lot of these songs and if you look at their song titles they're always just like what does this mean it means nothing even like <laughs> you know a lot of bands do that right they have a title that just it, they don't even say even a song that has lyrics pink floyd they won't take lyrics and put that into the song title they'll make it like a crazy totally different song title yeah. so I'm just trying yeah. to come up with like the craziest, like this doesn't even make sense. Okay, that, that works, let's do it. And I want people to be confused by it, you know? So um, the Maddie 2.0 is a great coffee drink title, didn't work. I love my purple hair, <laughs> didn't work. Like there were just some titles that didn't work. You know, it had to be more abstract and, and over the top. Huh. I, I know what you yeah. mean about that. Like, because <laughs> if, if there's vocals in the song, then you just yeah. name like California of girls, like that's the name of the song. Like, right. you, know, you know, it's an obvious choice. But if there's no lyrics, it's like yeah. you know your name. It's like you have to outsource it or like you know, yeah. hire someone to come up with the title. It's so like 
I'm so happy is the name of my song. And <laughs> this quarantine is rough. Like, I didn't want it to be like, I didn't want, yeah. you know, I, I want it to be so <laughs> abstract, not even make sense that people could, because I want people to interpret the music how they maybe are feeling. If it's emotional, right. it's very like, like I said, it's like atmospheric, soundscapey, soundtrack type stuff. So I don't want to release this giant, you know, cool sounding arrangement and then call it like, I love coffee because it just ruins the vibe. It's like, oh, this coffee. Yeah, yeah right. Well, yeah. I, I think what you need is, um, you know, those refrigerator magnets that you can make your own. Study. You need to put them all in a bag and pick out a couple refrigerator magnets and let's just see what Roll happens. Roll them all to the fridge. There you go. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to see the song titles next. You know? Might um, as well. Steven wants to know if you've ever seen the Mars Volta live. I've never seen the Mars Volta live. Um, I know. That's, has Steven seen the, the Mars Volta live? That'd be... <laughs> follow up questions Steven. yeah right i remember the last opportunity i had in you know, canada there we go i'm from buffalo and there was a show this was years ago this was like when the mars volta system of a down you know when they were touring together back in the early 2000s and they toured together in toronto and i had a chance to go and i'm like eh. it didn't work out and then never got a chance to see him since so those are two bands i really want to see system, system of a down. down and oh god that sounds like a party yeah can you imagine and I'm, <laughs> no <laughs> This was like 2005 ish, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll see them again. It's not like these bands are going to be breaking up anytime soon, and here we are. <laughs> so I learned my lesson. Oh, guys, if you have the opportunity to see a band, don't be like Maddie and go see them. Don't be like me, yeah. <laughs> That's a good life lesson. Just anything. Don't be like me, and you'll be fine. You don't. Know? Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Lonnie. Um, the last time that we had Maddie on, you know, we talked about a few of his tattoos, and we know that he has a tattoo with. Avril, but we wanted to know about your tattoos and uh, you have one with Black Veil Brides, correct? Um, yeah, so I got uh, Who Will Tell the Story of Your Life, which is a uh, Black Veil Brides lyric from uh, their song, or our song, In the End. That's so, awesome. Yeah, I guess I could show you. Okay, yeah, let's and, and you got that before <laughs> being part of the band, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I did. Band. I got that, got that before being in the band. So, so fucking cool. just great. Great yeah. here. You can see it. I got a lot more tattoos now, so it's kind of blended in. It's not as noticeable, but you can see the script right there. It just runs down my forearm. Is, um, is that one of those things, like when you secret something, like you put it out into the universe and you're like, I'm going to get this tattoo. And now all of a sudden you're in the band kind of thing. <laughs> uh, it wasn't my intention. I can tell you that, but it does seem like, it does seem like that, you know, it's, it's pretty nuts because at the time that I got that tattoo, I didn't know anybody in the band or it, I, it had never popped into my mind that I could ever join, you know, like it, it was just never really something that I considered. Cause as a band, like they have all their members. They don't, it's not like somebody like Avril where they hire musicians for mm -hmm. a cycle. It's like they have, the band has their members. So I was, I was never like, oh, maybe I'll join the band. Like that never occurred to me, but yeah, it's crazy how it worked out. And if I had known when I was getting the tattoo that I'd be in the band one day, it's, I wouldn't have believed it. That's insane. Yeah. That it is. is so crazy. It really, it really is. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I mean, it's nowhere near the same thing, but like I have a Ric Flair tattoo. I'm a huge like wrestling nerd. And now I'm like yeah. friends with Ric Flair. Like it's just like things cool. are sure. Yeah. Woo. Well, what's kind of funny is like, I, I remember, um, cause like, yeah, I was a big fan of the band. And then the singer kind of went off on a solo project on the side. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe that's something I could play in someday. Because my entire career up until joining the band was playing for artists, playing for singer songwriters who hire musicians. And I was like, oh, cool. Like maybe I could play in that one day. That would be neat. I still didn't know anybody in the circle. And then I remember being on a tour with an artist and he told me that his friend was the drummer in that Andy's solo project. I was like, oh, neat. There's my in, you know? <laughs> but like, I never pursued it. And then that artist eventually hired the drummer who played for Andy for a tour. So I got to work with him. And then he recommended me to play in Andy's project when uh, they needed somebody next. So it was just kind of like one thing led to another. And I was like, wow, this crazy idea that I had years ago, it's like happening now. And I'm not, it's not like I'm trying to make this happen, but it's just kind of falling into place. And it really is one of those things like, wow, maybe the universe kind of wanted this to happen. And, uh, yeah, and then like that was cool enough playing in the Andy Black solo project. Man. Then after that tour ends, uh, you know, they part ways with their bassist and they need a new bassist. And I was like, wow, 
man, maybe let's keep the momentum going. Maybe I'll get asked. And I did. I didn't, and I, I never put my name out there for it. I was never like, hey, please consider me. Uh, and I was just asked to join. So yeah, you know, you, you work hard and you, you know, you be a good person and you put good energy out there and it, it comes back to you. That is what, that is like the yeah. definition of like serendipitous. Like yeah. it, it, that I can't, that blows my mind, honestly, but how freaking cool. That's, that's amazing. It's, it's, it's like a movie. It really yeah. is. Ooh, I want to see that yeah. movie. Serendipity. Yeah. We have to make the Lonnie movie. Who's going to, who's doing this? Yeah. <laughs> it's just you have <laughs> filmmakers on here all the time. Who's going to do this? We got to do the, the Damien Lonnie. Leone, but they were probably involved oh. some blood and murder. <laughs> we don't want that ending. So I mean, it might be fun. Yeah. We didn't get to that part of Lonnie's life. Maybe that's, you know, maybe it'll fit in. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Any killer actor? clowns? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, the uh, the other question about um, Black Veil Brides, of course, is uh, that I think we're all a little curious about is how does that makeup get decided? And uh, did you have a, a say in that? How does that work? Um, like in terms of our individual designs, you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, so everyone in the band has their own makeup look, you know, so, sort of like the band Kiss does, you know, mm -hmm. um, everyone's got their look. So, yeah, basically, <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm the newest member in the band. I've been in the band for almost two years now, actually, but uh, the band had released about five, yeah, five albums prior to me joining. So the other members had their looks, right? And it was stuff that they had all just come up for themselves, like, oh, I want, this is what I want to be. And then when I joined, um, you know, we really wanted a design that fit in with the other guys, yet was a refreshing sort of look. Um, so yeah, basically what it is, it's a, uh, oh, so so hard in the mirror. It's a, <laughs> it's a, I have like, I do an X pattern on my cheek. So I can't even draw an X, it's so hard. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Everything's flipped. So just, yeah, look on my, Instagram or, yeah. or Google me and you'll see I, I do like an X on my cheek and it kind of <laughs> runs down my neck. Um, and that was the design that uh, Andy and I came up with together. So the singer of the band, Andy, um, he's, you know, he's got a great imagination and has a lot of input with everything that goes on with the band. Uh, you know, he, he really, uh, a lot of it stems from his mind and imagination. He's a super creative guy. So I was like, you know, what do you think might work best for me? And, and so we, we kind of came up with it. Uh, together and and I think it looks pretty cool. It really fits my face and it, it matches well with the other guys' makeup. So yeah, you know, it just comes from comes from our imaginations to answer the question. That's awesome. I wish I had like cool makeup to wear every day. I feel like I Danica for the stream. Can we like do makeup? I mean, do you remember that time when we had the, the guys from from Face Off on and you did that oh, yeah. fucking badass one that you had? That was very oh, cool. thank you. Ooh. Yeah, I I, I attempted. It, She's putting me over. It, was awesome. it wasn't. No, it, was, it was very cool. She's my best friend. She has to say that. Um, Fair enough. I was going to say, <laughs> I think um, Andy's doing a convention. I think he's doing Days of the Dead, right? Is he? Doing uh, is he? Uh, I'm not sure. No. Yeah, okay. I think I saw him announced for like a Comic Con with like, um, I think Alice Cooper is going to be there, Corey Taylor. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, he's all he's all about that stuff. He's he's very active and a lot of the scenes but yeah particularly the comic book scene too outside of music he's he's written a comic book that accompanied his uh previous solo album the ghost of ohio um actually our the new blackfield bride director that that's coming out in october there's going to be an accompanying comic book too oh wait, so that comes out what october 29th from what i read uh yes actually i'm i can't remember the exact date i think it's the 29th I should know this. It's sometime <laughs> in October. I'm so embarrassed. No, I, I think it's on your Instagram. So I, I googled. So you're you, you're good. But that's very exciting. Okay. That's not too far away. Like it's almost June, which is terrifying. Yeah, How yeah. slow last year was, and this year we're like, let's pump yeah. the brakes. But um, it's yeah. it's very exciting. Originally, the record was supposed to come out earlier, but it had to be postponed uh, due to COVID delays. But now it kind of works out because we'll be on tour right as the record is being released. So uh, in that sense, it's like. Yeah, you want to be on tour when the record's out to help promote it and everything. So kind of worked out. It's also like the best time of the year. So it feels like an added bonus treat for like fall <laughs> Halloween season. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's it's a cool bonus. But um, okay, so Danica and I are going to each ask one more question and then we have a couple games we're going to play. So I guess mine would be, okay, we'll ask Vincent. Um, do you have any fandoms outside of music? I was going to point to Lonnie. Oh, oh, nice point. You did it. Oh, I, I, that was good. 
Hold on, um, this one. Do you mean like are you are you a fan of anything? Sure, like music? whether it's like sports or comics or movies, oh. anything. My, yeah, my, well, I have the same answer every time I'm on here, so I'm like, yeah, oh, I know. Happy? <laughs> I'm a fan of Matt's haircut. I, I love that thing. Right? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I see you're growing out the back too. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go kind of mullety type thing, you know. It's gonna be a good Love time. It. Love it. esque and you know. Oh, I don't even know. I was yeah. talking before the show. I'm like, it's gonna take like six months to a year to get the length and get everything set, and then I'll be bored with it in like a month, and I'll just cut it. You know, that's how it goes. <laughs> you're yeah, allowed. You're I know. I'm, I'm trying to grow yeah. mine out a bit more now because I had it longer, then I cut it short about a year ago, and now I'm trying to grow it out again so it's a bit longer for the tour. Um, yeah. anyways, uh, to answer the question, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of a lot of things, I guess. Um, I'm all backlit. There we go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the problem of being in front of a window. It's like, yeah, huge issues. Anyways, uh, yeah, what, what, let's see. I, I sculpt actually. I'm a fan oh. of sculpting. Yeah. I like, I, I sculpt stone, which is one of my hobbies. So, <laughs> you know, sculptors yeah. like Michelangelo, like I, I look at those masterpieces and i'm just like how how do you do that so i try my best and i'm not as good as any of the pros but i, I try so i guess that would be it that's cool uh, yeah. yeah yeah and maddie we know you're like your horror spooky movies horror, spooky mm. movies and spooky Ooh. coffee that's what i like <laughs> right <laughs> i i am the complete oh, opposite because oh, really? I, I don't drink coffee and i can't watch horror movies i'm a oh. big baby <laughs> not uh, not a one not a single horror movie huh I can't do it. See, me and Maddie, we bond over the bass and the, the music yeah. and the hair. But when it comes That's to movies it. and drinks, nope. No. Well, <laughs> yeah. what, what would you say is the best film that you guys have, like, seen during the pandemic? Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. Oh, you know what? Maybe it counts. This was, like, right at the start of the pandemic. It was in theaters, but I didn't see it until it went on demand early. But The Invisible Man, the new one with by oh, Lee Winnell. Really? It's very good. So oh. good. So good. He's actually one of my favorite filmmakers. And I actually met him in LA and it was like the greatest moment of my life. He's the oh my God. He nice. co-created Saw and he did Insidious and uh, he had a few upgrade, like a sci-fi thriller type thing. So I got to talk with him for like an hour. It was great. And uh, he gave me tons of advice on film scoring and soundtrack composing and stuff, which very ironically cool. enough, I'm doing a little bit with my record with the soundscape, you know, soundtracky type thing. So that was cool. So number one for me, even though oh, it came yeah. out right before the pandemic, I watched it during the pande pandemic. Same, when it, same. When it went on demand. So yeah. How about that's, you? An that's super cool, Matt. <laughs> yeah. um, I, w w the one that sticks out to me that I watched uh, was Palm Springs with um, what's the guy? I don't know. Have you guys seen that movie? I don't think I have. I, I don't oh. think I've even heard of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, what's the guy's name? Um, he's in the band Lonely Island. Like the singer. Oh, Andy oh. Sandberg. Andy yeah, Sandberg? Andy Andy Sandberg. Wow. And then the girl, the girl is uh, Kristen Maloney, I think is her name. It's like the mother and how many mother. Yeah. And it, basically, the movie is that they're in a time loop and they live the same day over and over for like, okay. and but nobody knows except them that. So every day they wake up and they remember everything, but it's a fresh day for everyone else. So, I don't know. It's really good. Interesting. I will yeah. check it out. Check and it out. If you haven't seen Army of the Dead yet on Netflix with our friend Dave yeah. Batista, go watch go. it. Lonnie, you can handle it. It's not too scary. The zombies are, <laughs> they're friendly. Well, not really friendly, but they're, they're not. not friendly, <laughs> but, I mean, it's not Shaun of the Dead. It's oh. not as funny as Shaun of the Dead, but it's, but it's a movie. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> yeah, definitely watch it. Well, Danica, what do you think? Should we go to our All game? Right. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Because we have two different ones, so I don't yes. know how we pick. Which one's first? I I think the the truth and two lies. Okay. 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 So oh th this is something that we started doing recently, and Maddie watched our stream with Steve Gonzalez and said, let's do this. So we had Maddie and Lonnie each send us five true facts about themselves, and then Danica and I came up with two lies for each of them. So this is how it's going to work. Um, Lonnie's, yours are first. So we're going to read to Maddie the three options and Maddie is going to tell us hmm. which one he thinks is real. And then you will reveal what the actual real one is. So uh, um, I can't oh. even remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> we, pla we planned this, what, like two or three weeks ago now? Yeah. Like, I, I can't even remember what I, I sent him. I hope that you know your real one. So <laughs> if not, we'll help you. All right, Danica, <laughs> do you want to read the first three? All right. Hmm. 
Okay. Wouldn't so, it be so. funny? If, wouldn't it be funny if like the lies that you made up for me are actually true though? It That'd could. It could. It could be. Because what do we do if that? I'd be really interested to find that out. So. Then we're geniuses <laughs> and mind readers. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So, which of these is true about Lonnie? He speaks French. He is allergic to avocados. Or he is trained nice. in parkour. Lonnie speaks French. Is that right? Yeah. Do I? Yeah. I want, yeah, that's right. <laughs> what? yeah. What? Wee wee. Yeah, well, that's see. it. Yeah, I uh, I I took school in French, and there's like a French immersion program in Canada where you can take school in French. So kindergarten to grade twelve, I did it all in French. Whoa. Really? I only did four years of it. That's impressive. And it kind of worked out. At the time, I'm like, I'm never going to need this. Why am I doing this? And then I then a few years ago, I married a Moroccan. My wife is Moroccan, and her family only speaks French. They don't oh, even know that's English. amazing. So when I'm in Morocco hanging out with them, it's all in French. So I'm forever thankful that I know French, you know, and I'm not the best at it. I try my best, but I can I can hold the conversation. So it kind of worked out. Je m'appelle Heather. That's all I got. <laughs> ah, je m'appelle Lonnie. I, I had the same kind of experience where, like, I was like, I don't know when I'm ever going to use this. I had, like, a friend that speaks it, and then I bet – I met a bunch of refugees like somewhere from Senegal and and Somalia and and Algeria and I was like, "Oh shit, I can actually talk to these people. This is fucking yeah. cool." <laughs> yeah. It's totally. yeah. Totally. Hooray. Yay, yeah. French. It really makes you appreciate like, you know, like let's say you're in your own country and there's like an immigrant who English is their second language and it really makes you appreciate the effort they had to take to learn another language, uh, you know, li living abroad or traveling abroad. Um, like when I'm in France and it's all in French and I, I, you know, I try my best and, but it's tough and it really makes you appreciate people who can learn a second language like that. It's, it's a big skill to acquire. It takes a lot of practice. Definitely. All right. Okay. Here's the second one, Maddie. Here we go. All right. Okay. Here we go. Does Lonnie do Tai Chi? Hmm. Can he make his own salad dressing or was the first band he ever saw play live the band Ween? Oh, that number three just seems, it seems very specific that it would be tough to be a lie. But I've seen Lonnie <gasps> make food on Instagram stories. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen any Thai cheese. So I think one's out of the question. <sighs> I'm going to say number two, he can make his own salad dressing. Lonnie. That's true. I make a mean salad dressing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, go. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's damn good. <laughs> is it a, what type of dressing is it? Caesar. Ooh. Caesar. Ooh. Okay. Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Man. About the food thing on Instagram. I always used to be like, I hate when people do that. It's like a considered a, a, a sin to post food on Instagram. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's like, you know, you hear about a lot, but lately it's like, I just kind of been enjoying making meals and it's kind of sort of like an art form in a sense of making it look all pretty on the dish. So I'm like, I'm just going to share this on my story and people can unfollow me if they want. I don't really care. Well, yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's very appropriate to share things on Instagram that are food related, especially if you made them. Exactly. Like, yeah. Look, I'm proud of this thing that I did. I'm absolutely fine with that. Please do. Yeah, a restaurant might be different, but you know, I mean, whatever you want to share is cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, if you're a foodie, which is the thing that people are into. It's like, you can be into music, you can be into food, you can be into uh, sports. If you're a foodie, then you'll appreciate a nice a nice looking dish of whatever it is. Sculptures and salad dressing. All right, that's the name of Maddie's next single. All right, Danica, you wanna oh, read the third one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so which of these is true? Uh, oh. Lonnie fell off the stage and got five stitches in his head or is a certified dog trainer or can't make grilled cheese without burning it. Oh, as I was just like, yeah, he makes food and he makes his own salad dressing. I feel like it would be a trick <laughs> to then say he can't make grilled cheese, you know? So I'm trying to think of all of your stories that I've seen and I've never heard anything about the stitches. I know of food, but usually your food is good. I'm going to go with number two and say that you're a certified dog trainer. No. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's it's yeah. number one. So yeah. what, you have to tell us about what happened. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Um, so this was in 2016. I was on tour 
with uh, an artist named Sean Hook, a good friend of mine. And we were opening for Lindsay Starling, who is oh, a uh, yes, violinist. violinist. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, we did a US tour with her. It was amazing. We did six weeks. Yeah. Uh, and we did this. We did the states, and uh, so this show was in New York at Hammerstein Ballroom, beautiful venue. Uh, it was one of the ones you were all looking forward to the most on the tour. He had a lot of label executives there and stuff like that. Managers flew out to see the show, and basically, it was one of those kind of shows where it's a open floor, the venue, and then they build the stage that morning with like risers, like squares that they put next to each other. For whatever reason, on the very side, they were missing a square. So there was created just like a five by five foot hole in the stage, oh. like six foot drop onto concrete. Nobody told us that there was this. It wasn't marked off with caution tape or anything. So we walk out, it's pitch black at the start of the show, right? You can't see anything. There's usually like a guy with a flashlight to, and there wasn't, and nobody told us anything. So everyone's like, yeah, Sean Huck. And we walk out. Boom, right down into the hole. I land on the concrete, bust my knee. Like, oh. my sh I couldn't move my shoulder for like weeks. I was walking with a limp. And yeah, so I'm in total oh. shock. I open my eyes, just instant pain, blood everywhere, uh, which I didn't even realize because it was so dark. But like, yeah, I, I people like come and meet me. They're like, oh my God, what just happened? And they're like shining a flashlight on me. And it turns out like I had a concussion. There was blood all over the place. They rushed me off to the hospital and uh, I got five stitches on my head and it was terrible. And uh, yeah, it was one of the worst things really ever. But oh, uh, well, it makes for a good alone. story. It yeah. sure does, it sure so does. You're definitely not alone. There are plenty of very, very impressive musicians who have had that same problem. Yeah, it was like my only time ever riding in an ambulance like to the emergency, which was kind of a rush. But yeah, it was it was nuts. So number one is true. Oh, <laughs> good lord! But we should miss the grilled cheese one. All right, yes. there's two more. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's the next one. Does Lonnie have a foreign coin collection? Did he get into a fender bender with Dennis Leary, or does he prefer the top bunk over the bottom bunk? That's funny. Uh, I, I love seeing Matt's face as he's reading these. Like, he's I know, I'm, like, like, I'm so like, okay, this you really want to do well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you live in Canada. So if you have coins on you, they're foreign. So does that count? You know, <laughs> that I don't know if that counts. So Dennis Leary. No, I think it's three top bunk over the bottom bunk on tour. That's right. I'm a top yeah. bunk kind of guy. <laughs> I, just, I like the sway of the top you know you, you go around those corners you get a good sway it rocks you to sleep that's funny i i like the bottom bunk so but a lot of people like the top so on this last tour which was well, on this most recent tour seven years ago before the pandemic or whatever no, but, uh, <laughs> they were all like okay maddie you're the you're the new guy so you get the bottom bunk and i was like and i i didn't want it like obvious that i like the bottom bunk and i'm like all right i guess i'll take it you know so <laughs> it's great they thought it was like initiation and something, but the, oh, I got nice. like bottom bike. Jokes on them. <laughs> yeah, jokes. Because if you ever watch, I don't know, maybe you're better at this, but I love watching the people crawl into the top bunks on a tour bus. It's yeah. tough. It's like Spider-Man stuff. And you yeah. do have to be trained in parkour. So maybe you're- Why, why do you think my arms are so ripped? You know, yeah. from all, the, from all <laughs> that climbing know. into the top. I just kind of like, yeah. I'm like, oh, the, there's my bunk. It's done. The, the bottom, you <laughs> just roll in. You're, you roll in and you roll out. Literally, you do like a tumble roll out, and you're like, that "Sounds go. like more my speed." Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's definitely. I don't, I don't. I'm not athletic enough. If they put me in the top bunk, I don't even know if I'd be able to get in there on tour. Like, it'd be, it's so. it's a oh, challenge, God. you know. But what's nice yeah. though is like if you if you you keep it stuff in your bunk. Like, let's say you have like, I don't know, like your in ear monitors. Like I keep mine in my bunk, right? So it's like if I need to grab them, it's like eye level, and I can just reach my hand in. Whereas if you're like you're trying to get something from your bunk in the bottom. You gotta like get on your hands and knees on the floor and it's like a huge production. To, yeah. So, I mean, not that any of this really matters, but. <laughs> this is very important. All right. Life well, of a touring musician. Tour soon. <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. This is Maybe I'll go right. bottom next time. I don't know. Maybe I'll see, I'll see what all the hype's about. I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll take the bottom yeah. and I'll text you and I'll be like, damn yeah. you, Matt. Like, the right. bottom sucks. I'll be, I'll be like, dude, I can't even get in my bunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sleeping in the back lounge. Yeah. Ooh, 
Ooh. Then we'll, right. we'll, we'll have to trade. I'll play for Avro. You play for Black Veil. There <laughs> we so go. We can have oh, the box be... we want. Oh, we didn't want to reveal this yet, but that's actually happening. On the <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, guys. All right, Danica, this is uh, Lonnie's last, last and final one. Lonnie's. All right. So, has he never been inside a Subway sandwich shop? Has performed at the grand opening of a gold mine? Or was a high school <laughs> arm wrestling champion? He was talking about his arms earlier, so maybe. Yeah. My arms aren't that big, okay? I was just joking. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe you, you say that now, and now you're backtracking because you don't want me to yeah. know that you won your arm wrestling championship. Yeah, you didn't know me in high school. I'm... That's true. I'm going to say you've never been inside a Subway sandwich shop. No, I have. That's my okay. that's my go to on tour. I'm a big Subway oh, guy. Gold mine. Yeah. What? Right. Now, that's crazy. I got to know about that. Well, uh, like you know how as a musician you occasionally play like random gigs, just at like random events, you know. Like this, this was one of them. There was a, a gold mine that opened up in uh, Kamloops, British Columbia. And uh, yeah, got hired to play there with an artist, um, buddy of mine well, named Paul Philip. Very Paul Hillock. important follow up question Was it 1835 and are you a time traveler? <laughs> no, it was what? It's probably like 2012 or something. What's so what's funny? It was like in this up in this mountain uh, on the outskirts of town, like way up in this mountain. It was super dusty. Like I had to wipe down all my gear after because it got really gross and dusty. And then as we were leaving, like we played the show, we packed up and we left. It went really well. Um, they didn't pay us in gold. They paid us in money. But uh, you know, all, all was well. So we're like trying to find our way out of the mine, and we were like we went further up into the mountain. And we're like trying to find the exit. We couldn't. And there's like dead roads everywhere. And then we get a call from the guy organizing the event. He's like, hey, are you guys that van that's up in the mountain? And we're like, yeah. He's like, get out of there. There's like landfills out there. We're doing blasting. Like you guys might run over a bomb at any minute. And we're like, oh my God. So we had to like slowly backtrack at like one mile an hour our way out of there. Oh so we got back to the stage area. And we luckily we lived to tell the tale. So oh, you, you did. inside the mine itself? Oh, it was right next to it. Okay. So like the mine, mine was a, a it was a huge hole in the ground, like a giant hole. Like you couldn't even really see the bottom. It was like massive. Uh, there was like a stage just to the side of it, and they were like selling hot dogs and stuff like that. <laughs> hot dogs at the gold mine, of course they are. <laughs> yeah, it, the side going, yeah. It was it was an event. It was really fun to play at though. It was a good time. That's awesome. Well, Maddie, you you did pretty good. You got yeah, three out of bad. five. But cool. now we're switching things up. So, oh, yeah. so now Lonnie, you have to tell us which of these is true for Maddie. Here we go. Number one, does he never lose at a claw machine? Was he a district manager of a chain of Starbucks or did he help Bill Nye shop for Woodstain? Wow, these are all fascinating. Well, let's eliminate here. So I don't think anybody's ever won at the claw machine. Like it's... <laughs> Like, so to never lose would be amazing. I would, I would worship you if that were true. Oh. Um, let's see. I, I guess I'll go district manager of a chain of Starbucks. You know, you're, you like coffee. So if, you know, I'd say maybe that was a place you'd worked at in the past. Number so two. that's your answer. Okay. Maddie. Number three, Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, oh, Bill, Bill, Bill. I think, you Bill know, let's remember in Burbank, I used to work at the hardware store. Okay. Uh, so I got to, there were a lot of people, a lot of celebrities that would come in. So mm -hmm. I met a lot of people that maybe people aren't interested in that I think are like awesome. But for some reason, the Bill Nye one always gets people like, oh my God, you met Bill Nye. So that is so in, cool. Yeah. What he was, was shopping, he staining? Uh, his deck at his house. So he, okay. wow. he had like a color. So he had the stain and then he had like the, the protectant and sealant on top. And it was funny because he was like, hey, is this is this what I need to, uh, you know, seal my deck after I color it? And <laughs> the color was water-based, but he grabbed like the oil-based color. And I felt so weird because I told Bill Nye, oh, you need this one. And it's I was treating it like any other customer. And I'm like, no, you need this one because that's water and that's oil. And it, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't blend. Oil won't, you know, if you know put if you oil on there, it'll, <laughs> it'll just float on top of the yeah. water and it won't seal. And I'm like, I don't know. I just told Bill Nye I that like oil the, and yeah, water won't. Like he and he gave me that look like, people. I'm a scientist. You know, you know he, he was very nice. And I'm like, he's like, oh, oh thanks for your help. And um, yeah, there are a lot of people that I got to meet. Um, actually, I met Derek Frank, who 
uh, yeah. I was on with him. Uh, yeah, last yeah. Time I was on the show, and he at the time, and he still is, bass player for Gwen Stefani. And um, I just moved to Burbank, and I helped him cash out and everything. And he's like, "Hey, you should go yeah. to the Viper Room here, a bass player." And you know, so that was probably my best connection that I met working there. But then I had maybe like mm -hmm. 15, 20 fun people that I met, just like celebrities and singers and stuff like that, and actors and stuff. So that's cool. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I heard. Nice guy. I heard Bill Nye is really tall. Is that true? Yeah, he's super tall and very skinny. And uh, it was funny. It was just, yeah, I, I worked at the paint department. So I was just like, here you go. There's your wood stain. And, you know, I'm trying to think. I, I met so many people. And it's just like, I, you know, as a horror movie fan, my favorite person I met was Ted Raimi. He used to come in there and he was like the co-creator of uh, Evil Dead. And he was in like the latest creep show cool. season on Shutter yeah, and everything. Cool. And, and it was funny because the people working there were like, who's that? I'm like, oh, it's Ted Raimi. And they're like, who? And it's so funny. But then like Steve Carell would come in, everyone would lose their minds. And I'd be like, eh, whatever, you know, <laughs> but I met Ted Raimi, you know, I was always into like the B list people like Dana Gould came in. He was like the, he used to be a writer for the Simpsons and he has a, he had a show oh, stand against evil yes. and all this stuff. And he came in and I'd be like, Oh wow, this is crazy. And I got to meet him and talk to him over weeks. And then people would be like, who's that? I'm like, Dana Gould. They're like, Oh, well, Melissa McCarthy's right there. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. It was so, <laughs> it was so funny. The, the differences in like, but everyone kind of got to meet the people they idolized. It was really cool. It was a fun place to work. I would and love to meet Bill Nye. Well, no actually, more. I did. I met him at a convention. No, I think mm -hmm. about that? it. But Danny Bill Gordon. Nye. Bill oh, Bill Nye. Nye. Yeah. yeah. Bill Nye. He's the man. All right. Here's the next one. Danica. Read All the right. So was his first car a Volkswagen bus? Is he terrified of walk-through haunted house attractions? Or uh, does he own a guitar that was once owned by John Stamos? Wow, man, <laughs> crazy stuff here. Um, well, I know you love horror movies, so I, if you like being scared, then you'd probably like walking through a haunted house. Uh, I'm gonna go with number one. First car was a VW bus. All right, Maddie. Lonnie, the truth is number two. I love oh. horror movies. I love the aesthetic of it because I don't really get afraid. I don't get scared of horror movies. I can watch it. I love the filmmaking of it. I love the, the you know, the special effects, just the ambiance of like the spookiness of it. When it comes time to like actually do it myself and get chased by some guy with a chainsaw and have people jump out of me and everything, I'm a baby. I can't do it. Okay. So I knew I was going to trip you up on that. And a lot of people like, you got me. By that. Yeah, I, I don't really I guess scared it's of movies, you know? Something about, like, just being on your comfort of your couch or whatever makes it okay. Yeah, yeah I know that, like, okay, there's not actually going to be a chainsaw-wielding person chasing me by watching this movie. <laughs> but you go through a haunted house attraction, and that's exactly what happens. So, right, it's like, I have right. a tour to happen. Don't, don't kill me. You know? <laughs> I can do, like, the universal cool. ones. I do, like, horror nights. But that's more of, like, fun. if you've ever been there, it's, like, a giant group of people. And it's all, like, scares that are all, like, on demand. They're all timed and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but I don't really consider that like a real walkthrough attraction. Any of the other ones? Like, I think it's like a, a different experience. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying like, those are doable. It's more of like the amusement park version of it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the real like haunted house attractions, can't do them. I'm, I'm a baby. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> We're here to protect you. All right. Okay, here's well, the next one. All right. So is Maddie second cousins with Conan O'Brien? Has he never seen the godfather or is he ambidextrous but only when drawing what do you think lonnie okay hmm <laughs> what's my score so far am i zero for zero. two <laughs> yeah. it's okay uh, it's, it's so totally cool. fine so basically i have to get the rest of them right to die you can do zero. it i believe otherwise you. you're you can't come back on the show ever <laughs> <laughs> banned <laughs> yeah all right yeah let's see yeah um i'm gonna say has never seen the godfather maddie that is correct i've never seen the godfather oh, so, hey! God. that yes! caused like, a giant thing on tour we were picking a movie to watch and they were like godfather and i'm like oh, i've never seen it and it was like a giant thing everyone's like you've never seen the godfather are you kidding me like it it was so and it just so now I'm like not watching it just out of spite. I'm like, no, I'm never gonna watch it. Like I haven't seen it either. Around to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't seen I, it. So yeah. Cool. It, so what what when I've been hanging out with like the Black Veil guys, they give me the hardest time for never seeing um I'm drawing another blank. Uh what's the Adam Sandler one where he like plays hockey but he starts golfing? 
Oh, oh Happy uh, Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, Happy Gilmore. I haven't seen that. It's and a fun get, watch. No one's fun. They, they yeah. like threatened to kick me out of the band until I see that. So. Well, then time yeah, to see Happy Gilmore. <laughs> that's what happened with me with Godfather. Everyone's like, it's so funny that people get so crazy about stuff like that. Yeah. They've really oh, yeah. yeah. These like, guys are so, they're so sure. adamant. They like For them, it's like the worst thing ever that I've never seen it. It's like I committed a crime. And yeah. I still haven't seen it. It's been like two years. <laughs> no, don't say that. Say you've seen it. You know, yeah. keep your job. Yeah, job I security. saw it. It was whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, Danica, you want to do the next all one? All right, next one. So, does Maddie have a license for insurance sales and brokerage? Ha did he have an encounter with a ghost on a tour bus? Or has not eaten pork since 2012? Okay, I thought it said poke, not pork. <laughs> oh, pokey. Yeah. Um, pokey. Is it pokey or poke? Uh, I don't know. Okay. You say the poke, <laughs> and I say poke. It's it's poke. Same deal. Po pokey sounds cooler. <laughs> um, okay. Wow, this is a tough one. It's real tough. Um, I'm pretty sure you don't have a license for insurance and stuff because you went to recording school, right? I did go to recording school. So it wouldn't make sense that you did that and went to like brokerage school. <laughs> um. I don't know. I mean, those bottom bunks can be pretty terrifying. Maybe you did have an encounter <laughs> with a ghost on a tour bus. No, no <laughs> sleeping ghost, you know, sleeping right by the engine. Okay. I'll I'll go with the uh, hasn't eaten poke uh, pork since 2012. Maddie, nice. The truth is number one. It was oh, that's after, awesome. Yeah, after music production school. Uh, it's, you know, it's funny when you go to music school and you get a degree, like if you get a degree from med school or something or law school, right? It's like, Hey, I'm a lawyer. I can work. Hey, I'm a doctor. Now when you get a music degree, it's like, Oh, I guess I'm a musician. So right after college, I actually got a job at an insurance agency for maybe about like a year. And, uh, I ended up getting trained. I was selling insurance, you know, wow. managing policies, all that stuff, uh, took all the money and just threw it right into like recording gear and all that stuff. And, uh, did it for maybe like a year, a year and a half, but I don't do it anymore, obviously. And I probably have to renew my license through New York state, which is where I was licensed. But yeah, I actually sold insurance. Believe it or not, the person with the eyeliner and the mascara and the purple hair right now <laughs> sold, yeah. sold like homeowners insurance and stuff like it's five wow, years ago. Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's super cool, man. I, I respect yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah, that was cool. And I knew it was going to trip you up. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got me. <laughs> that, that right. was a good one. This is our final one. All right, Lonnie, here we go. Is his favorite film, The Coneheads? Can Maddie ride a unicycle? Or... <laughs> I hope so. I'd love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> or Maddie absolutely cannot ride roller coasters. I'll say the roller coaster. That seems to be a thing that a lot of people have a hard time doing. Maddie? You're right. Two out of five mm. there. Can't do roller coasters. Uh... Yeah. Maybe I could do one, but that'd be pushing it. Like I get, forget it. I can't do it. Like we were, yeah. we were at the mall of America on tour. We we had like the hotel that was connected right to mall of America, which has like the indoor amusement park and everything, yeah. you know, and there's all these roller coasters and rides and stuff. And I still went Cause I had to go hang out with like the band and the crew and, you know, enjoy my time together. But I was the designated here, hold my cell phone kind of person, you know, and they're all doing <laughs> these giant roller coasters and loops and stuff. And they're like waving to me and I'm like, Hey guys, how's it going? I'm on like the bench. Like, yeah, I'll get like, I get like crazy motion sickness on, uh, on roller coasters. So. That's my too. husband in the comments right now is saying a whole lot of nope on roller coasters. He is the same way. Really? I'm just like, all right, bye. I'll be on the yeah. coaster. See you later. Babe. I'm also the kind of person that like, depending on the Uber driver, even like the uber driver will put me over the edge like especially like in the oh, yeah. hills and stuff it's like oh boy this is like it's always hit or miss sometimes it's like hey get right. an uber. it's like oh i forgot i got all these winding things through the canyon and all this stuff and it's like uh, oh, that's yeah. too much of a roller coaster now i'm out it for reminds the rest me of the night. a, a drill bit where he's yeah, like, like, back, to, back with a taxi cab he's like i yeah. never try that in my car <laughs> so take it back to the tour bus oh, one more time like no. you probably Back to the tour bus one more time. You probably wouldn't like the top bunk because it's like that. You know, you're swaying so much. It's like you ever seen like the night bus in Harry Potter. Oh yeah, is that? It's like, like that that kind of thing. So. All over. 
Stay with I the hope bottom. no one in the band is watching this interview right now because they're like, hey, you know what? On the next tour, if we want to initiate Maddie, we just put him in the top <laughs> bunk and he's done for, you know? <laughs> put so, him on a roller coaster. Make yeah. him watch The Godfather on the roller coaster. <laughs> I love roller coasters and I really want to go on that top bunk. Just to just clarify, <laughs> I really want that. I hope they don't put me on the bottom bunk. <laughs> well, since we kind of reached the hour point, we don't want to keep you guys too long. We will save our other game for next time. Uh, it was go. a game of Would You Rather, but... This is so much fun. You guys both did amazing. And I feel like we learned a lot here and we, you know, mm -hmm. this is a lot of fun. And Lonnie, thank you for joining us. Like this is, you know, this is so much fun. since you got two right, you are allowed to come back. Those were the true. rules. Yeah. Oh, thank, so. thank you. No, no, that was, that was super fun. I'd love to come back uh, anytime. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, before we wrap this up, do you guys have any final thoughts you want to leave us with? I, I really want to be in the top bunk and I really love roller coasters. So again, if they're watching this, I really, really like the top bunk. Um, so you know what? For me. I'm, <laughs> my times. final thought is I'm going to try the bottom bunk on my next Black Goat Rides tour. I'm going to give it a shot. You've inspired me, Matt. Yeah. You just kind of roll right in, roll right out. I'm like a little guy too. I'm like pretty short, you know, I, pressure's no, on though. I don't know, but. If I don't like it, I'm uh, I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> That's fine. But if I try the top bunk and I can't even get into the bunk and I have to sleep in the back lounge, then I'll let you know too. <laughs> yeah, you're just sleeping on the couch every night. Yeah, <laughs> well, that'd be great. Well, uh, before we wrap this up, we want to go over our upcoming guests. So on Thursday, we are welcoming back Robert Duncan, who is the former editor-in-chief of Cream Magazine. Next Tuesday, we have Tyler Maine. Okay, Lonnie, cover your eyes. He was the shape in the new Halloween, so we're not trying to scare you. <laughs> Next Thursday, we're welcoming back Ace Von Johnson from Faster Pussycat and the LA Guns. The Thursday after, we have Jonah Ray from Mystery Science Theater 3000. And we're currently figuring out what time we're going to have Ryan Roxy back. He is the guitarist for Alice Cooper. He lives in Sweden. So we're going to have them at an odd yeah, time but it'll be it'll be fantastic anyway <laughs> you guys are awesome thank you so, thank much. You so much and until we meet again au revoir is that how we yeah. should sign off nailed it sorry right. right. <laughs> au revoir mon amis <laughs> bye everybody <laughs>